You expect her to roll over on her friends? Hunter plans on using his irresistible charm. You know where you can go. I belong to a cause, a movement. Your father is Brother Harold Hobart's of the National Aryan Order. Your status is that of prisoners of war. Where's the bathroom? Things are about to explode. Get back in there! He was already beaten and helpless, but that's not enough for you, is it? You have to kill him. Hi. What can I do for you? I was looking for Johnny. Well, it's lunchtime, little lady. Him and Carla down at the Cloverleaf. Okay. Thanks. This is Lookout. It's all clear. <laughs> Have a 211 in progress at Pony Express Firearms, 6660 Southfield Road, Hollywood. Come on, 
Come on, come on, come on, come on. Angela Holly? Yeah. Why don't you call me Angie, okay? Angie. Okay, I like that name. You willing to waive your rights to have an attorney present during questioning? Sure. Who needs a lawyer? I'm not going to tell you anything anyway. Well, that's your privilege, but I sure wouldn't want to try to protect a group of people that left me bleeding to death. Yeah, well, maybe they didn't have any choice. No, no, they uh, had plenty of time to get you out of there. That, um, that guy that was in the van with me, he's... You okay? Dead on arrival. <laughs> you never had much luck. The uh, gun store clerk's in critical condition, too. It looks like your friends left you holding quite a bag. Well, that's between them and me, isn't it? That's it, huh? That's it. Well, Angie, if uh, you think of anything else or you need something, just let us know. Yeah, you know what I need is... No, get out of here. Oh, well, I can't help you with that. I didn't think you could. And you can cut the Angie Holly crap. We ran your prints. Your last name's Hobart. You're wanted up north in Gower County on a bank robbery murder charge. I suggest you get yourself an attorney, Angie. If you can't afford one, then the courts will appoint one for you. You want to drive her where? Pineville, Charlie. It's the Gower County seat. Well, let me guess. You figure you'll get enough solid information to nail her and her associates if you take a 10-hour drive with her. That's about the size of it, yeah. yeah. Look, she's a victim. This poor kid's not a hard-nosed criminal at all. You expect her to roll over on her friends? They dumped her, Charlie. When she realizes that, I think she'll come around by the time we hit Fresno. You could see it in her eyes. She was mad as hell and pretending it didn't bother her. I don't know. You say that one up there's for murder? She sat outside in a truck while her friends went, hit a bank, and killed the teller. Now, they wore ski masks. She didn't, of course, because she was sitting outside in a lookout car. We think these people are careless with this kid. We'd like to try to point that out to her. And we think we have a good opportunity here, especially since Hunter plans on using his irresistible charm. Well, it says in here that when they had her in custody up there, four men the same number to hit the bank, the same number to hit the gun shop. Four men hit the Pineville jail and broke her out. So how mad can she be with these guys? And even if you get something out of her, it's not going to be admissible. By the time I hit the freeway, I will have her rights read to her, for the third time, mind you. What does our DA's office say? Are they willing to let this county have her? Willing? They're relieved. They're overcrowded. They're understaffed. Same old tired story. Good luck. Very, very impressed with this automobile. Looks new to me. Sure you don't want me to drive? Don't start on me, OK? Hi. Did you guys come to say goodbye? No, we came to drive you to Pineville. You did? Yeah. Great. You can take the cuffs off of her. You'll be good, won't you? I'll be better than that. She's just being transferred from here to West LA, all right? Period. OK, what do you want me to do, right in the front or the back? Why don't you ride in the back and give our ears a break? Ready?
friends are friends. Loyalty, that's all that matters. So, you're taking a long, dull drive for nothing, because I'm not going to sell out my friends. Well, how do you like that? You saw right through us. That's right. So why don't we all just sit back and relax and enjoy the scenery? Your friends sold you out, ran out on you, and you don't like it one bit, do you? I don't care about them. I belong to a cause, a movement. I believe in something that's a lot more important than you or me or them. This is the wrong way. Why are you going this way? It's gonna, it's a hundred miles longer this way. Yep. Oh, I get it. Well, while you're sitting here cutting my friends down and calling them chicken, you're afraid they're gonna try and rescue me, aren't you? <laughs> We're just keeping the odds in our favor. So what's this movement you believe in so passionately? It's what America's all about. It's the right of decent Americans to defend their way of life against freeloaders and subversives in the mud races. I mean, there's nothing personal, guys. You're nice, but you're on the wrong side. Why are we on the wrong side? Well, you look at the, the mess that this country's in and you accept it. I mean, it's like you think that nothing's being done about it, but you're wrong. Something is being done about it. Things are about to explode just as soon as all the sleepers wake up. Sleepers? What are sleepers? Sleepers are all the millions of people who believe the exact same way my father does. It's just they haven't done anything about it yet because they don't have any leadership. Why are we stopping? Well, we're going to take a little rest here. Yeah, a little rest. You want to find out if my friends are following us. Three, please. Well, you've got a real high opinion of my friends, don't you, Rick? murdering cowards, Angie. And we just can't have you hanging around with scum like that. You know what my father says? He says an undedicated life isn't worth living. And who might your father be? Wouldn't you like to know? We do know, Angie. Your father is Brother Harold Hobart's of the National Aryan Order. Fine. Fine. You know where you can go. See what you did. turning here for? Great. We're never going to get to Pineville. This is a range rider calling Wolfpack. Range rider to Wolfpack, do you read me? This is Wolfpack. I copy you, range rider. Over. Yeah, that car you said to look out for? Just turned off, heading north on the old Pineville alternate road. Nice work, good buddy. Thanks for the info. Hey, nice to help out. So where's home these days, Angie? We heard that uh, your father's National Aryan Order disbanded a few years back. We didn't disband. And I don't want to talk to you, either of you, anymore. Friends run off and leave her bleeding in the street for the cause. Is that why they robbed the banks, Angie, for the cause? Yes. And that's the last word that either of you are getting out of. Lord, you're safe, child. I thought maybe we'd lost you. Take him in the tent. Daddy, I'd like to go to my tent and clean up a little bit. 
All right, go ahead. Welcome to the camp. We call it the New Valley Forge. I'm Angie's father. You're Sergeant Hunter. You're Sergeant McCall. For the time being, your status is that of prisoners of war. We're not cruel or inhumane. You'll be treated in accordance with your behavior. I never assume that a man or a woman is my enemy until they prove they are. What now? Well, we have an operation in about three days. What happens will be decided by the outcome of that. In the meantime, you could be useful as hostages. That's why you're here. All right, take them to the lockup. Back from LA and told us you were dead. Hobart's and his army have in mind for us? <laughs> well, if they don't wind up killing us, this thing will. You spend too much time in here, you'll die of hyperthermia. Yeah, we gotta find some way out. Speaking of, did you notice anything strange about Brother Hobart? Yeah, he's nuts. Yeah, but other than that, guy kept feeling me up with his eyes the whole time. That idiot is our key out of here. Yeah? Why don't you play to that? I mean, while he's courting you, you might be able to get our guns back for us. Believe me, if I get a chance, I will. Yeah. The question is, where's the bathroom? I'll dig a hole for you over there. Sit down. Randy tells me he observed you meeting with my daughter. He said you were behaving in a carnal fashion. He felt ashamed of both of you and couldn't go on watching. He's jealous. That's all it is, Daddy. Randy's jealous. Shut up, can't... Angie. I'll get to you later. Jennings? Well, I'm in love with Angie. Is that a fact? Well, the moment you decided you were in love with my daughter was the moment you should have given some thought to the rules and regulations of this brotherhood. Yes, sir, I know. I realize I should have come to you first. I'm deeply sorry I didn't... Sorry say. isn't enough, not by a long shot. You're gonna have to prove yourself worthy of my daughter and worthy of this brotherhood. Yes, sir. Whatever's required, Brother Hobarts, I'm ready to do. Well, that's a start. Randy's asked permission to test you, and I've agreed. Tonight, you'll meet in the circle, and what will be, will be. Now, get out of here. You too, Randy, get out. Daddy. Daddy, please don't do this. It isn't fair. He's got a right to challenge him. You don't question that, do you? Daddy, I've never asked you for anything. Damn it, child. Me. Randy and I busted you out of that jail. Now, he's got a right to your consideration, and he's got a right to challenge Jennings. Uh, well, and I'm grateful to you and to Randy, but don't I have any rights? If Jennings is the man for you, we'll find out soon enough. 
He doesn't have to beat Randy, but he has to prove that he's man enough to stand in there with him. Listen up. As you know, this is our court of last resort. And the question to be settled is private and personal. It doesn't matter who wins or who loses. It's how they conduct themselves that's important. All right, let's get on with it. broke his neck, Randy. He had it coming. their car all right I hope to god they weren't in it they weren't we checked it out before the tow truck got here searched the area too no sign of anyone alive or dead you that. You are really something, Randy, you know that? You outweighed Mark by at least 50 pounds and you killed him. He was already beaten and helpless, but that's not enough for you, is it? You had to kill him. It's just something that happened in the heat of battle, Angie. You know what you are? You're a rotten, lousy coward. In L.A., he took off and left me lying in the street because he was too chicken to come back for me. I had to put the mission on my men first. Oh, like hell you did. You chickened out. You ran. He's a bully and a coward. Are you going to let him get away with that? It's not a woman's place to talk to a man like that. Randy told me about leaving you behind. He felt bad about it, but he thought you were dead. What's more important, he had the success of his mission to think about. Men will do what they have to do, Angie. Whew. Hot as Hades in here. Sorry I couldn't get you a more comfortable accommodation. Well, uh, some food, shower, and some clothing might be nice. Well, I was able to find some fresh clothes for your partner, but I couldn't find a dress big enough for you. Sergeant McCall, I'd be pleased if you'd be my guest for lunch. 
Well, I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Could we uh, possibly make it a threesome? Could only get a reservation for two. Wise guy. Save my spot. Never thought a cold shower could feel so good. Thanks. Yeah, I laid out some clothes that should fit you okay. They look great. How you doing? Fine. I'm a lot tougher than I look. That boy who was killed was very special to you, wasn't he? I think you better hurry up and get dressed because my daddy expects people to be on time. Feeling he might be a little bit more tolerant with you, though, because he thinks you're a sleeper in more ways than one. Well, you look 100% better, almost like one of us now. Well, a shower and a new set of clothes and a meal like this makes me feel great. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No, just call me Brother Hobart. We just shared a meal. There's no point in being formal. Can I call you Dee Dee? Please do. You know, when I say you look like one of us, I don't simply mean uh, that you don't belong to one of the mud races. I mean, you seem like us in spirit. What do you mean? I get the feeling that if you understood me and our movement, you'd be really surprised. You might realize that we're not so far apart as you think. Would you? Tell me a little bit more about your movement. I really don't know that much, and Angie told us very little. There are hundreds of other organizations like mine clear across this country. And there are millions of sleepers that are waiting to join us when the day comes, and that day is coming soon. I supply all these other groups with funds and coordinate their activities, and no man has ever been able to do that before. I'm not a prideful man, but I take a great deal of pride in that. Excuse me a minute. I'll take you on any day. Hey, hold it. What are you men arguing about? I got this guy snooping around my tent. I'm gonna steal from him. What's your side of the story? We were playing cards last night, and I thought I left the tent. You know how I feel about gambling in camp. It only causes fights like this. You can shake hands now or settle it in the circle. Well, maybe I'll just stick. Sorry, Brother Hobart. Uh, just a little difference of opinion. Sometimes the men get edgy before a big operation. Well, you settled it quickly enough. Mark of a leader. Hold it right there. It's empty. You think I'd leave it loaded? Guards! Give me that. Give me that! Give me the other one. What, do you think I am, a fool? That fight was staged for your benefit, Sergeant McCall. I just gave you a golden opportunity to save your life. And you failed it. I thought you would. Take her to the lockup. You know, if we weren't in deep trouble before, we are in it now. I can't believe I underestimated him like that. Well, he may be nuts, but he's not stupid. I should have played along with him a little bit longer. You know, you don't look very well. As a matter of fact, you don't look very well at all. You're getting worse by the minute. Well, despite the fact that it's 110 degrees, I can't imagine why. No, no, but you aren't. You don't look very well at all. Maybe you should lay down here. Do me a favor, don't go nuts on me, too. Uh huh. lay down. down there. Hey, we need some help. Come on, hurry up. My partner's sick. Come on, move it. What's going on in here? I need to see Brother Hobart's. I think my partner's having a appendicitis attack. Come on, take a look at her down there. <sighs> hurry up.
What's going on? They pretended the woman was sick, and when we went inside, they jumped us. Get him back in there and lock him up. If he tries anything, shoot him. What happens to you will be worked out between us. Brother Hobart's. He hit me with a real sucker punch after lying to me and telling me the woman here was sick. So? I want him. I want him in the circle. I don't want him killed unnecessarily. I might need both of them. I won't kill him. Mister. I'm a police officer. I'm here to speak to the parents of Kenneth Hatch. You're too late if you come to hassle our boy. Kenny's dead. Died in L.A. Yes, sir. I know about that. I'm very sorry. What's going on, Dwayne? Oh, for pity's sake, put up that gun. Lieutenant Ambrose Finn, ma'am. L.A. Metro Police. We have reason to believe that two of our police officers have been kidnapped by the same group that your son was with when he was killed. You better hope not, mister. That bunch eats cops for breakfast. If you can't talk, Sybil, go on back in the house. We don't have to tell them nothing, Edie. No law says we got to. Please, just go back inside. I'm sorry about Dwayne, mister. We've been having kind of a hard time here lately. What was... Kenny getting killed? Yes, ma'am, I understand. Do you have anything you can tell me about that group that your son was running with? He never talked about him. Said he wasn't allowed to. Did he give you any idea of where they might be located? No. Uh, he wrote us a couple of letters. They were postmarked. Do you still have them? I got some inside. I'll get them. Oh, go on, you old coot. Get inside there. Two men face each other in the circle. One is an enemy, the other is our friend. One would destroy us if we gave him a chance, and the other would give his life for our cause. The outcome of this contest will show all our enemies that we're dealing from strength. Explain it to him, Randy. Tender Randy, will you? Take the prisoners back to the lockup. Give me a hand. Take the tent. out of here before Randy can get to you. Easy. They're loaded. Oh, I think I love this girl. <laughs> Me too.
Covered! Drop the guns! Drop them! Must have hit the tank. We're running out of gas awfully fast. Let's get off the road. That's it, everybody out. What's wrong? I lost the tracks. They must have pulled off the road. How far is the highway, Angie? 12 miles by the road, maybe 10 this way. Get there no matter what. Angie's with him. She's gone over to their side. Come on, move out! Well, we got company. Pistols against rifles don't count. Yeah, we're gonna have to go someplace where the Jeeps can't. Like right up that mountain base there. Let's keep going. far in this country. All right, leave the jeeps here. Come on, get the light out. We gotta get him in rifle range.
Angie. All right. Yeah. See your knee? Yes. Can you walk? You go on. My dad's not going to hurt me. No, no, come on. You're going to have to tough it out here, kid. Just stop. Let me rest a minute. How far is the road, Angie? It's right over that hill. This ridge right here? Yes. Get on. No, just leave me here. Get on! Don't give me any problems here. Tough enough as it is with your complaining. Your father not trying to kill you. Invitation, move it, move it, move it. Come on, go. get it. How's Angie? She'll be all right, no thanks to you. I'm gonna try to get her a break from the courts, maybe help her to turn her life around. But you, brother Hobarts, are going to prison. Half the men you'll meet there belong to those mud races you were talking about. They're gonna like you. 